Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mastering Medicine webinar series with Picmonic. My name is Ron Robertson. I am the co-founder and CEO of Picmonic, and I am joined today by Jasmine Kwong. Jasmine, welcome and thank you for joining us. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. All right. So, Jasmine, you are a first-year PA student. Where? At Western University of Health Sciences in Pomona, California. Nice. And what brought you to Pomona? Um, I actually live around this area, and I wanted to stay somewhere local for PA school, and so Western was pretty much one of my top choices, and I actually got in, so it all worked out. Love it. Well, so today we're going to spend, uh, over the next hour, uh, a little bit of time talking about, number one, how you got into PA school and your journey through that, uh, what it's like to get started actually going through the process. Uh, how to crush exams and courses, um, and then potentially answer some questions of users as they as they call in and uh, ask, and any other tidbits or tricks, pieces of advice that you want to pass on to our listeners today. Of course. Uh, really excited to have you join us, and uh, um, let's go ahead and just dive right in. So, why PA school first off? What uh, what was the driving force or motivation, inspiration behind you going to PA school? So initially, um, I was pre-med and I wanted to do something medicine. Um, I was pre-med up into my junior year of college. Huh. I actually joined. There's background noise. That's my dog. <laughs> so don't mind that. Um, but he, but um, junior year in college, I decided to join this pre-med honor society and everyone was pre-med. I was still kind of like, okay, like, let me see how this is. Yeah. Um, I saw what they went through, how they were studying for MCATs and the residency and fellowships and all that. And I kind of got scared, yeah. but I still wanted to kind of see what it was all about. So I stayed in that. And I asked um, my like members and um, fellow classmates or whatever, um, like how they got shadowing opportunities so they're like oh down the street there was um this place that did volunteering and shadowing for mds pas nps all that so i decided to go check that out and um i went there wanting to shadow a doctor and they're like oh we don't have any more doctors everyone else uh all the students take in all the doctor uh spots but there is a pa and i was like i don't really know what a pa was about um but i was um I was ready to just jump in and just shadow anybody in the healthcare. So I did that and I was really pleasantly surprised of what a PA is and what they do and what the future for PAs were. So um, that kind of changed my whole route, um, so to speak. And from then I started to read up more about PAs and what the curriculum was like for PA school and what the job outlook was. And um, it just, went from there. Well, it's definitely a growing field and it's interesting, right? Because there's an incredible amount of uh, autonomy as a physician assistant and you get to do so much of the medical kind of arena, yet you don't have the, you know, four, eight, 10, 12 year uh, educational cycles that you do going to actually become a doctor. Exactly. Um, so there's, there's probably a lot of benefits, uh, some pros and cons to everything. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about your journey getting into PA school, um, because it, I know for me getting into medical school, it was incredibly difficult. Uh, but let's let's focus on you in PA school uh, and tell me yeah. a little bit about your journey through time uh, before this last year. Yeah, um, so it did take me three times. And um, when I found out that I wanted to pursue PA, it was, like I said earlier, my my third year in college. And it was kind of late because I didn't really have any um, healthcare experience or patient encounters, um, more or less. So it was kind of tough, but I ended up applying my senior year in college. And um, I kind of just wanted to test the waters. At the same time, I, I was like, oh, maybe it'd be so perfect if I can just get into school right after I graduate college. Um, so I applied my senior year to four schools um very local schools and i was like okay uh, i have all these classes and hopefully uh, they all count for these requirements and i applied i did the whole entire cast application and almost went up in my secondary applications and 
I called one of the schools just to make sure my classes all kind of um, were checked off and they said they weren't. Um, I assumed that my 400 level psych courses were okay for intro to psych. And they're like, no, that doesn't work. You need intro or you need 101. And I was like, wait, but I have 400 level classes. Like, doesn't that just take, they're like, no, sorry. Like you have to take those classes. So because I didn't read all the requirements and all of the directions that kind of just, um, it kind of just fudged me for a year and I was kind of sad, but I mean, I wasn't really ready. Um, second year around, I was kind of missing the hours. So to apply to PA school. Yeah. Can you describe? Yeah, um, Cause I, so, well, yeah, mm -hmm. I know that there's a big audience from uh, all over with many different backgrounds. So explain uh, what, what the hours is and what is, what is even necessary? What do you mean? Yeah, so um, as a requirement to apply to most PA schools, they require you to um, work with patients and to have patient care experience. Um, and so they kind of make you tally up all the numbers and all the hours you've worked with a patient so that they kind of know that you have experience and you know how to kind of interact with patients. Um, so that's another check mark that you have to complete um, prior to um, applying to some PA programs. And so minimum to be competitive, at least a thousand hours. Um, a lot. My, yeah, it is a lot. So it was really hard for me because I just barely realized I wanted to be a PA or go to PA school. And so coming into my second year, I didn't really have that many hours. And to be competitive, all these applicants coming in had years of experience because they, they really knew that they wanted to pursue PA at a really young age or they come from a different specialty. Um, so I was competing against those people and it kind of just, it was really hard. Um, I had all my prereqs, all my anatomy, physio courses, but my hours were lacking and my volunteer hours weren't that great either. Um, that's another check mark thing that PA programs want you to have. You want to be, uh, you want to have volunteer hours on top of that shadowing hours, uh, patient care hours, healthcare hours. So not just grades, but all of these other things. Um, so second year, I just didn't have enough and it was just not up to par. And so my third time around, I was like, okay, this is going to be the last time I do this. I'm going to beef up all my hours. So I worked two jobs and went to school on the weekends to retake my C's that I got in certain prereqs. And I just hustled um, until I couldn't anymore. So I racked up all my hours, did what I could with my GPA, um, and I shadowed a whole ton. I shadowed MDs, I shadowed PAs and NPs to really make sure that PA was the right one for me. Yeah. Um, volunteered a lot non-medical and medical. Um, I spoke to a lot of alumni from these programs just to make sure like if I was able to choose between a school, like I know which schools are better. Um, I went to conferences. I did everything I could to like just yeah. make myself a better applicant. And I really, really, really tried my best this past or two years ago actually now. Um, and I was really pleasantly surprised with five interviews and three acceptances. Um, and then I got into Western and I started this whole pre PA Instagram blog thing, uh, prior to matriculating into school. And then now we're here. So uh, it took a lot of hard work, but there were definitely a lot of things that I made mistakes on and a lot of things that worked for me. And that's, that's kind of my mission to like, share this knowledge and to like hopefully help people out there that are going through the same thing I went through. Well, I mean, realistically, you know, applying multiple times, uh, but you persevered and it takes a lot of grit and, you know, determination to do that and spend many years going through the process. And it sounds like uh, maybe enhancing parts of your application or, you know, checking off some of those boxes that otherwise you didn't have working in your favor. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's great. When you uh, when you think about that, and I know you share some of this advice on your blog. So why don't you actually take a second and tell people what is this blog? Where do they go? Uh, just as the the plug, so that people understand yeah. that they don't get they're not 
if they don't finish this webinar or just in case they're hearing about it at a different time, there's more resources available and advice that you offer. Where do they go for this? Yeah, so um, it's basically my name, uh, Jasmine K uh, hyphen PA.com. And I have all of my statistics on there. So each year, what my stats were for GPA, how many hours I worked, um, for all three years, I have kind of all my blog posts on there, like how to find someone to shadow, what to do for volunteering, um, why it took me three times to get into PA school and which program should I apply to and I have a lot of things on there right now that's recapping what it's like to be a PA student yep. so I kind of have it as like an online journal for me to just look back to, to see like what PA school is like um, I also have this really cool page on there that kind of highlight my classmates and their journeys so not only do you get my background and my journey you get my classmates too and you can see that the whole MSPA class of 2019 at Western, you can see what they did to get to our program and what influences them, what helps them, what didn't help them, what their stats were. So I have that all on my website. It's kind of nice to see um, students that aren't 4.0 getting into programs because that really like made me sad because I'm not a 4.0 student. And I was like seeing on the PA forums like, all these great students getting in and it kind of it kind of made me a little sad but um so yeah you can go on there definitely read up on my classmates information and kind of get a little a little boost from it hopefully and um yeah there's a lot of resources on there i have um essentials to pa school if you're going to start soon what i think are awesome um things to get what apps to use what study materials to use i have a lot of study tips on there um, kind of showcasing what worked for me and what didn't. So let's, uh, maybe we can use that as a, a bridge to actually talk about, you know, after you got into school, uh, mm -hmm. it's it's obviously a shift. It's a little bit different than college. Uh, so, you know, the first semester getting started for any of the healthcare professions can a lot of times be overwhelming for people. It's a, it's a change of pace and the information, uh, you know, the amount of information that you have to consume and retain uh, it typically blows anything out of the water that you've previously experienced in life. Um, mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about, for you, what it was like to get started in PA school and some of the things that uh, maybe you've learned now, you know, as you complete your first year. Yeah, um, so once I got in, um, we actually had a little Q&A with our upperclassmen and they're like, okay, so whatever worked for you in undergrad, Mm -hmm. undergrad it just it won't work for you in PA school it, it's going to completely change um so I took that to heart and I was like oh my gosh like I'm going to be a different studier and a different learner for me back in undergrad um I was a very multimodal uh learner so I use visual aids I use writing aids and I use like um Sometimes audio, not too much. But I was like, oh my gosh, like this might change completely for me in PA school. And I don't have the time to kind of adjust to that. Right. So I took that to heart and I was freaking out my whole entire first month. Um, the first month, give yourself, give yourself some time to freak out because everyone's trying to figure out their way to study and how they're going to study for each class. Um, but one of our classes, they kind of prepped us. They're like, okay, go take this questionnaire. Um, see what kind of a learner you are and go from there. So I took that questionnaire and that questionnaire thing is actually on my blog. It's under study tips. I took this questionnaire and it turns out I'm still multimodal and I'm very kinesthetic. So I, I, I love doing notes and I love visual aids. So it was pretty much the same for me in undergrad. So I was like, okay, so it should be the same. Um, so I tested that out probably like the later half of the month and it like all started to co like connect and click for me. Um, but um, our program actually did a really good job in easing us into the information. Um, so it wasn't too crazy all at once, but it was, it was, there was a lot of anxiety cause you're like, okay, here it is. Like I'm here, like it's going to be really hard. And it wasn't too hard in the beginning cause they did such a great job of just easing us in. 
but you're just like, oh my gosh, like I'm comparing myself, like my classmates studying, I see it on Instagram, they're studying for this. And I'm like, I'm hanging out with friends and I just like feel so anxious and feel so guilty. So there's a lot of emotions the first month and you're just trying to figure things out. But um, yeah, so for so, uh, for certain classes, like I use different study aids um, versus other ones. So for example, um, for pharmacology, I freaked out because I've never take I've never taken pharmacology ever in my life. So um, we just jumped straight into antibiotics, and I was like, I don't even know what this means. Like, what is what treats what? And I don't Wait. know how. Mm -hmm. Graham, who? Yeah, um, anaerobes. Like what? <laughs> um, so I was kind of like flustered, and we had a test like three weeks in and I was like, oh my goodness, I got a really bad score on my quizzes. And I was like, am I supposed to even be here? I felt like an imposter, like what's happening? Um, so I don't know how, but um, Pygmotic kind of just like came into my life and I was just using it. And it was a very, um, very visual and very like just, like it was just concise and high yield and it was just like perfect for farm for me. Um, I actually used it. I didn't really tell my classmates about it because I was like, oh, let me just try this. And if it works, I'll just tell more people about it. Um, so I used a couple of like the free trials, I want to say. And then I took a quiz and I got a really good score and everyone else kind of didn't. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, let me see if like people can use this and maybe it'll work for them. So I showed it to my classmates and they like used the free trial and it was, it was great for them. And so they started to use it too. Um, so that worked really well for me in pharmacology because pharmacology is just memorization, just. So much memorization, rote memorization. It's just, not always, you're not trying yeah. to process to biochems or whatever. It's a lot of times. Exactly. Is, side effect, what are contraindications? And you just yep. have to memorize it and know it down cold, so. Yeah, wow. it was it was so great. Um, and then I was like, okay, maybe like let me try this for a different class. Um, so I actually used it towards the end of my like studying for an exam um, for adult medicine, which is kind of signs and symptoms, clinical diagnosis mm -hmm. of just all the disease processes that we will encounter. And so I used a bunch of other study um, study guides and like study techniques prior to that and at the very end I would use Pygmonic for um, studying for this test because it's high yield and um, it's just like the main points like what you'll most likely see and these are the treatments very like just to the point um, great facts and I use that towards the very end of like my exam when it's about to uh, when I'm about to take it and that really helped too because there's just big picture stuff um, so that, yeah, it really helped with pharmacology and with adult medicine. Um, some other things that I used, um, for studying, uh, I, I love Quizlet. So Quizlet is a, basically a digital virtual flashcard set, mm -hmm. and you can just use it on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad, anywhere. Um, and what's really cool is that my classmates, make all the sets so all the cards for like yep. for pharmacology uh like chf so th they make all the cards for that lecture and we just share all of that and then i just go through it and i study through that and it's amazing because i'm just using all of their cards um it's just great um yeah quizlet's awesome i'm still using quizlet now uh, another thing that I love using is Notability, and that is my note, primary note-taking app, and that's on my iPad. Yep. Um, and I love it because I, like I said earlier, I'm a kinesthetic um, learner, so I need to write my notes down, and I need, need to write pictures or draw pictures and, um, yeah, use that to learn. So that's a really, really main part. I use Notability every day, so I use it for all my classes. Um, so that's a really great resource to use. There's a bunch of others. Um, Hands Prep Pearls. It's kind of like the holy grail of PA right. school. And this so, is a textbook, correct? I'm sorry? This is a textbook? Yes, it's a textbook. I wish I had it uh, with me, but it's a big little text, big little. It's a pretty 
big textbook um, and it has high yield facts in it. And a lot of um, PA students use it to study for the boards, which are uh, which is pants. Um, and I actually use it while I'm doing adult medicine because again, it just it's high yield facts. Like when you just don't have time to read the textbook, you just go through that um, probably towards the end of your studying and just to like get all the information going in your head. Um, so I use that definitely. Um, but I definitely, let's see, used more of like study guides and Pygmonic towards the end. Um, Pants prep was a little bit overwhelming because like one page has like a bunch of information on there and it just got too crazy to look at. I rather look at pictures sometimes and I just um, either did Pygmonic or I did Osmosis videos on YouTube. Those are great as well. So let's let's recap some of this for the listener. Yeah. There's a lot of different valuable points that you just went through. So Pants Prep Pearls is kind of uh, a, a comprehensive review source. It's a textbook. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, a lot of people will use it, especially before they take their pants. So they'll take it before they use it before their boards. They annotate it throughout school. Um, Notability is an app that you use for taking notes. Yes. Yes. Quizlet, which is an online flashcard application. Uh, you can use it on mobile. You can use it on your computer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sets that have already content that's already been created by students, uh, potentially in your class, so it will align directly. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they also just launched a marketplace. You can actually even find Picmonic on Quizlet now too. What? Uh, That's you crazy. Yeah. Uh, because the problem is there's a lot of people out there creating content, but you, how do you know if it's good content or bad content unless you or your friends created it? Uh, so Picmonic is actually a verified creator on Quizlet, so you could go and check it out there. But lots of great flashcards and content. And then Picmonic, um, which is a picture mnemonic learning tool, right? So we take the difficult to remember information that's frequently tested and turn it into characters and stories or picture mnemonics to help you remember it better. And so you learn by watching a video uh, and then you can take a quick quiz with, it's kind of a rapid review quiz that will help actually solidify the information. And then there's spaced repetition algorithms built in to help you remember it long term because that's a difficult part of medicine too is, you know, what you're learning in first semester, second semester, third semester, fourth semester, mm -hmm. it all builds on itself. And then at the end of the journey, you have to take a big board examination uh, to actually enable you to go practice in the field. So so great tools, great advice. Um, somebody, and, and we actually are getting some really good questions in. I'm, I'm peeking over on the side and I'm gonna wait till the end to, to kind of bombard you with a lot of these. Uh, I wanna get an opportunity to chat through some of these things that I think are, are really valuable. Um, I also actually created my own Picmonics because that is a, an option on the app. Um, so some of like the um, values for like lab values, for instance, it didn't match up with um, what we're taught. Like some professors like their lab values to be tested, right, right. Uh, which is ever changing sometimes. But I was like, OK, well, I don't want to remember the, the wrong one, which is probably mm -hmm. the correct one in Picmonics. So I just went in and made my own and it was super easy. And it just helped me so much because actually, you know what, let me show you because pretty proud. Um, but yeah, I went in and I made um, my own Picmonic and it really helped me. Um, right now we just did, we're doing emergency medicine right now. So it's a lot of information all at once. Mm -hmm. And um, don't mind the craziness, but I use kind of the ones for electrolytes and all that. And I just kind of created my own. I just made it that a zero instead of whatever number that was. Yeah. Uh, 135, I want to say I did, I turned it into eight. <laughs> so just stuff like that. Values and changed it up. Yeah. And then for like, I drew my own stuff. It's not zooming in, but like, for things like that, I would just draw my own things to kind what, of remember what are you better. Looking at right now, can you explain to somebody what one of those crazy characters is? Yeah. Okay. So this is my uh, Notability app. So it's really cool. You can just copy and paste all these kind of things on there. So I kind of went on Pygmonics YouTube, I think, and I just screenshotted all of these. And so I know it's kind of backwards, but this is for hypo hypocalcemia. And basically, it's kind of a cow that is really dried up. And for hypo, it's hippo. So they will always use the little hippo guy. Um, 
And this guy right here is hyper, hypercalcemia. So every time it's hyper, they use a hiker. So they use word associations and pictures to kind of help you remember things better. And I, it's awesome because I remember them very much. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a little look, see of how I kind of adjust my pigmonics to help me. And that was basically, that was two, three weeks ago. So I'm still using it. And it's awesome because I can remember better. Yeah. Uh, Pictures are so powerful. They really are. And it's, it's incredible to see what you can do uh, after learning with a picture or story or something that really elicits emotion. It can, you know, a lot of people are very skeptical about the potential of, of learning with cartoons, if you want to try and dumb it down to that. But, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely encourage people to, to check out Picmonic. We do have a free trial option. So as you were saying with your friends, they can sign up for free. They can use the system. Uh, and after, you know, a couple of days or weeks, depending on uh, when it ends up uh, working for you, you can always always subscribe for full access. So that's really neat to see, though, that you've actually customized your content. <laughs> Use the generator to do that. But uh, um, the, the generator, which is inside the Picmonic Learning System, people actually do create their own content uh, for new topics or things we might not have covered. So, mm -hmm. so Picmonic, Quizlet, um, Notability, and Pants Prep Pearls have all been, it sounds like, pretty fundamental in your first year journey to the success how did you know once you got started how did you find balance in the amount of information that you were having to consume and just living living life and and what does that look like for you um yeah balance is it's it's a very hard thing but um i it turns out that i'm a very schedule oriented person so yeah. i love my google calendar so that's another little study tip thing that you should get uh, you guys should download um but my Google Calendar is my everything. Like, I don't know what I'm doing in the next hour unless I look at my Google Calendar. Um, it's it's awesome. I schedule in, actually, my classmate. There's this one classmate that schedules in all of our classes for that whole semester. So he kind of keeps track of, oh, when this class changes or if we have a guest speaker that day. So he manages all of that. I link that to my personal um, Gmail account and my calendar and I see all of that and then I schedule in when I need to study. There is a reminders um, option on there so you can remind yourself to study OBGYN at six yeah. o'clock tonight. Um, and then, oh, I love working out. I need to work out. It's like my outlet from school. So I'll schedule in my one hour workout with, um, high fitness, which is like kind of a cardio, high intensity workout thing. Um, and then if I have a dinner, I schedule that in. If I have a wedding to go to, I schedule that in. Uh, mostly it's all studying, um, but it's all through my Google calendar. And um, yeah, I put like times when I have to walk Carter, our rescue dog. I literally do everything on my Google calendar. Um, and that's how I balance everything. I look at it and I'm like, okay, I need to have some friends time. I need to have some family time. Got to schedule that in. Um, so that's kind of how my life runs and I love it. It keeps me on track and it keeps me very mentally sane because I get to work out and see family and friends and all that. So you need to, uh, it's, it's so important to, to try and maintain balance despite the fact that Time, you never feel like you have enough time, enough time to study, enough time to get things done. Uh, but but ultimately, forcing yourself to take a break, spend time with family, uh, have a little bit of fun and relaxation, it's uh, it's crucial. So that's great. We're, we're, we're getting lots of really great questions that I'm going to want to get to here very quickly. Uh, All right. Tell me about, so just this journey, you know, of yours. So you're, you're finishing up your first year. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going second year and then at the end of your second year you take pants kind of explain to me though from your point of view what's next in the journey uh after well summer right do you get a yeah. summer? we get one month off in august and i'm gonna go to bali with Ooh. family and my boyfriend i'm so excited because it's it. honestly been a year since i've traveled and i love traveling um so i'm gonna do that and then possibly go to chicago hang out with some friends and yeah, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we get a whole month off and then September hits, September 1st is my first rotation and that's in urgent care. And that 
that's kind of nerve wracking because it's something completely new. And we just took, um, we just had a Q and A session with our second years yesterday, and they're like, it gets so much easier. You you guys are gonna love second year. Like right now, it's the hardest. Like you're gonna love it. So that got me really excited. That's great. So Bali, have you ever been to Bali before? Never, but I actually have a classmate whose husband's from Bali. He's Indonesian. Um, he has a house there and all that stuff. So I kind of chatted with him. I was like, hey, where should I go? Where should I not go? He gave me a lot of tips. So that was, that was really cool. One of our nursing scholars is hanging out in Bali right now. So I'm pretty jealous. Oh my gosh. Um, Beautiful tropical island life is what she said. And I'm sitting in Phoenix, Arizona, where it's 115 degrees out. So, Oh, my gosh. It's worse for you guys. It's been pretty hot out here, too. <laughs> well, I love it. I love it. So there's so much that obviously you've learned in the last year. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump in. I want to give you a chance to answer at least a few of these questions so we don't leave people hanging. Sure. Um, and this is going to span the gamut. So it's going to be rapid fire. Uh, and give me just a second to see where we are. Um, so quick question about NP versus PA. Mm -hmm. uh, fairly similar duties in the medical field. What in particular, if anything, made you choose PA over NP? Okay, so initially I had a misconception that I had to be a registered nurse or, a, or LVN to be NP, but that's not the case. Um, for me, I just... I thought that for a long time. So that's why I went towards PA because you can just start from anywhere um, right. to go into PA school. So that was my misconception and I believed it up until like last year. So that was kind of me. Um, but for surgery, I kind of do want to go into surgery and um, PAs can first assist in surgery. Uh, for NPs, I believe there's a certification thing you have to do, and there's like some other things you have to do that I was like, mm, I just want to do uh, PA. But I actually did shadow an NP and a PA, um, and I just felt more inclined to go for the PA route. So we encourage you to go shadow people, talk to both PAs and mm -hmm. NPs, figure out what's right for you, because it definitely is a different path. Uh, and there's subtle nuances that I can't speak to. So uh, mm -hmm. what should you do during your summers to prepare for PA school? Nothing. <laughs> You're going to hear this so much. Um, yeah. Everyone says to travel. Um, okay, so there is this thing called SPARK program at Western U. It's kind of a summer get you ready for PA school thing. But a lot of my classmates did it and they're like, honestly, it was great because you kind of refresh anatomy and physio here and there, but nothing will ever prepare you for PA school. Uh, whatever you learn prior, it's just going to be so new and so different. Um, my classmates that took that program, they're just like, yeah, I don't think it really like did anything. Um, just try your best to have fun. Spend a lot of time with family and friends um, because you're not going to have that much time and freedom while you're in PA school. And right. that's happening right now. And I just can't wait <laughs> to travel. Um, but yeah, just relax because nothing you do will prepare you. I know like people want to do medical terminology classes or anatomy um, refresher courses, but it's just relax because they're going to throw that and much more at you when you're actually in PA school. So just enjoy your time off. Uh, yeah. If you want, you can take those books with you to travel. I don't know, but um, yeah, just relax. Take advantage of the time. Mm -hmm. All right. How did you, uh, What's well, something again, it comes back to you. You obviously had a lot of grit and perseverance to get into PA school. You you had to apply m multiple times and we appreciate you being vulnerable and honest with, with us and your audience. But uh, how did you not get discouraged? How did you continue to fight through that even though it took many years? It was very discouraging. Um, it was very hard because I kind of went on these forums and saw that all these people were getting admission to like the programs and getting interview invites and I'm just here waiting for my time. So I got, I got really depressed and it was kind of bad, but what really helped was a positive support system. So I had my boyfriend, I had my family, I had my friends, a lot of them. Um, a lot of my friends are just PA alumni or they're now PACs and they're just like, you're going to get in. It's not, it's not if you're going to get in, it's when you're going to get there you have all the capabilities. So having that around and just having people cheer you on was really, really motivating and just very important. Um, 
some, I, I tell this a lot, but um, after my second time not getting into to PA programs, I, uh, a lot of people were just like, why don't you do nursing? Like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I'm like, no, my heart's kind of set on PA school and this is what I want to do. And actually a program was like, sorry, you didn't get into our PA program, but we'd like you to uh, apply for our nursing program. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I, I couldn't believe it. And I was like, um, no, it's okay. Thank you. But um, I'm going to keep going for PA. And I actually had a PA buddy that was applying the same time as I was. And he's a little older. And by the second time around, he got rejected too. And he was like, I can't do this anymore. I have to do something else. I have to start making money and just providing for um, his family. So he went down the nursing route, which is totally cool. He's so happy now. But for me, I was like, oh, man, like, should I go? No, I just, I just stayed and I just kept going through it. And yeah, like it, it, it's really tough, but the people you surround yourself with is really important. So that's what really pulled me through. Um, not going on that forum as much really helped, but um, just keeping busy. Um, when you're rejected and you have another year, you're not waiting another year. You're, you're constantly making yourself better as an applicant. Right. You're working you're doing all these hours of volunteering you're shadowing you're retaking the courses you got season like you're doing everything you can to better yourself as an applicant and as a person too so it's not another year waiting like i always tell my pre-pas that are just really sad from rejection like it's not waiting you're constantly being proactive and and doing stuff to to make yourself better so um i never saw it as a year waiting like but like before I knew it, like the, the new cycle already opened. So it was very quick and um, yeah, you just got to keep going. <laughs> and didn't, were, did you end up uh, being coming like an EMT or did you do some paramedic work? You went to Africa. I think there's probably many mm -hmm. things you probably ended up doing this time. Yeah, so not I definitely only. became um, an EMT because I needed those hours. And um, during school, I wanted to do a medical mission. And um, at USC, I was part of MedLife. Um, and I went to Africa to do um, to do some volunteer work to do medical uh, mobile clinics, mm -hmm. and that was really awesome. Um, and I actually did another medical mission right before I started PA school, and that wasn't just to gain hours or to just put that down on my resume or application. I just did it because I wanted to do it. Um, but I did a lot of that in that time being. So it was three years of just trying to get into PA school. And I was like, okay, what can I do? Like, I'm not in school. I'm going to work my butt off. I'm going to retake all my C's and I'm going to volunteer as much as I can. And that's what I did. Um, and yeah, a lot of people can't do medical missions because it is abroad sometimes and it's just really expensive. But I found a way to where I can like ease the cost of that. Um, I signed up for, I think, this is a pro tip. <laughs> I signed up for Chase one of those credit cards where you rack up mileage points. Mm -hmm. um, so you just keep spending and you keep paying things off and you rack up all these points. And then there it is. There's your travel ticket. I saved a thousand dollars by doing that. And I went to Peru to help children with disabilities right before I started PA school last year. Uh -huh. So that was really cool. Um, so yeah, get those credit cards and like rack up those travel points and you can, you can um, help out abroad and, Put that on your application. I love it. I love it. All right, we're going to keep going. I'm going to try and be more rapid sure. here because there's lots that keep coming in. Uh, how do you keep a healthy lifestyle in PA school? Um, I'm a dancer, so I definitely wanted to keep dancing, but I didn't have time to be on a team. So I love dance classes. I made it a point to schedule in at least two dance classes a week. Um, now I'm taking a break from dance, but I'm doing something called high fitness. Um, or high intensity interval training kind of workouts. And I try to do that at least twice a week when it's exam times once a week, sometimes when it's finals time, none, but I try to at least work out. Love it. I love it. All right. In regards to getting into PA school, do admissions committees look more for healthcare internships, research internships, or solely direct care patient hours and shadowing hours? How do you kind of quantify or qualify? And is it different per school? And you might know, I have no idea. Uh, yeah research, healthcare internships, direct patient care hours, what's important, what's not? Right, so a lot of programs will just 
blatantly say it on their website, patient care hours, we need 3,000 or we need 1,000. Healthcare experience, they don't really say. Um, not many places care about research, but I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, but I know the ones that I applied to didn't have any research requirements, yeah. um, but they really want you to be able to have patient care experience because they want to know that you're able to interact with patients and um, kind of, yeah, just know how to interact with them. Um, so on their site for each program, it's all different. Western U, we don't require any healthcare or patient care experience. Other schools like Stanford, they require 3000 or something like that. So it's very different for each program and you need to read the requirements yeah. um, or else you're just gonna fudge yourself and you don't wanna do that. So, um, so yeah, it is different. Points, right? Mm -hmm. no, exactly. I kind of bit you because you didn't maybe have all that flushed out. Mm -hmm. so. All right, um, what classes did you take while working and did you do this online or in person? I retook my chemistry series, my bio series, my genetics psych and soch because those are the ones that were either C's or I just didn't have. Mm -hmm. um, I retook them in person and I did, I think one of them hybrid. So one of, it was like online and then in person. So um, I did those through community colleges and I get this question a lot. They don't look down on you if you take it out of community college versus a university. Um, as long as you get that prereq done, you're good to go. Um, so I did, most of them, yeah, community colleges at a university and hybrid classes online and in person. Okay. Um, and we, I'm not sure whether you said it or I said it, but when we say picmonic is high yield, what does that mean in your eyes? So, um, so for like a certain disease process, they'll go into like the pathophysiology of things, uh, what you normally see in a clinical presentation, treatment, follow up, all that stuff. So instead of going into like the nitty gritty of all of that and very like drawn out explanations, they'll just tell you like, oh goodness, I don't know an example, but um, they'll just tell you the disease process. What are the most common things you will find as a sign and symptom? What are the treatments? And then what are kind of like the buzzwords like, Let's see, um, for croup, today we learned about em uh, pediatric emergencies. For croup, there is a buzzword for that. It's uh, it's called steeple sign, and that's um, on your x-ray kind of, um, uh, your x-ray film, that's what you're gonna see, a steeple sign. So on exam, when they say steeple sign, you kind of like, okay, that means croup. <laughs> so it's that's what I think of high yield information. It's very like buzzword kind of things like, when you say steeple sign, you think of croup. So it's kind of like that for me. So for us, we, we always just say, if it's frequently tested mm -hmm. and it's really difficult to remember, that makes it high yield. But ultimately, I think about taking, you know, all the important information, an entire like chapter or subject and condensing it down to what are the five to 10 most important things you need to know? And that's what Vic Monarch is going to do for any topic, any concept. We're just going to take and break it down, associate penicillin becomes a pencil villain or war fairy becomes a war, war fairy. <laughs> war fairy becomes a war fairy, right? And and ultimately those get wrapped into a story and, and that within a couple watching a video for two minutes, you should be able to essentially remember some of those key details much, much better. So, um, do you personally think it is possible to work a part-time job while attending PA school? It's hard. My classmates <laughs> actually did do that. They did per diem shifts. Some people have to do it because they have families to support or their family to support. So um, I have to check up with him, but I don't know if he's still doing it, but it's very hard because they're throwing all this stuff at you in just two to three years and you're expected to just be good to go all the time. So. It's, it's definitely hard, but um, loans are where it's at and it's it's tough. But um, yeah, I don't think it's possible to work because you just study so much and you just take exams so often. It's, it's really hard. Yeah. So there are a few questions on here from uh, a couple of our viewers that are probably so specific that I am going to encourage the audience to, if we don't get to some of these questions, feel free to contact Jasmine on yeah. Her blog independently, and she might be able to follow up with uh, some of the specifics. Mm -hmm. um, 
This one's interesting. So do you know any PA students in your class that are parents with young kids? And do you know how they're doing managing it? Oh, my gosh. So um, our classmate had his baby in August when we started. And his name, his little baby boy's name is August. It's so cute. Um, but he he's definitely tired, but he has a really good support system, too. We have a couple of classmates that are single mm -hmm. moms and they have like a three or four year old and they're kicking butt. Like, I don't know, like they're amazing. Um, they have a lot of family support and a lot of partner support and we support them too. Like we share all of our notes, all of our study guides, like, Hey, you didn't read this big textbook for this section on Friday. I have a study guide for you. Here's my charts. Like we help each other. Um, they're, they're rocking it. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't have kids. I have Carter, our dog, but that's nothing compared to a kid. So I don't know how they're doing it, but they're doing amazing. And it's completely doable. That's great. That's great. Um, interesting question. How do admissions feel about international shadowing experience? Do you know? And did that ever kind of come up in your, your path? Um, so we have one international student, actually a couple in our class. So... I mean, they went to school abroad and they have all their degrees from abroad. So I think it's pretty OK. It depends on the program, of course. So if you're ever unsure, you, you should um, contact the program directly. But there is, I say, one or two international students in our class. So I think it's pretty good. It's pretty OK. <laughs> That's great. Uh, what is your best recommendation to starting PA school off on the right foot? Um, get that schedule and uh, plan everything out because that really kind of helps me a lot. Um, yeah, get a schedule, get a calendar, get Google Calendar, set it all up, have a classmate set up all the classes for you or you do it yourself. I did that myself initially until we got our classmate to do it um, and just just live by it. And that's how I that's how I'm doing it. And make sure that you block off times in your calendar for fun and relaxation to play. So uh, and then, you know, part of that too is we, one of our last uh, webinars that we did uh, for the audience out there, check it out. If you go to YouTube, you can go to the pick Monica mastering medicine webinar series. And we were speaking with a gentleman, uh, his name's Dr. Taylor Brana um, about this. And he was talking about the war room and for him, it's, you know, when he goes into study, it's all the resources are there, no cell phone, no, no social media, no distractions. You're dedicating, you know, whatever amount of time that's blocked off on your calendar to, to accomplish whatever you need to. But taking that really seriously, because time management is tough. And even if you have everything scheduled and organized, if you don't put in the time to, to be effective and efficient while you're studying, it can it's, it's tough. Um, that reminds me, I actually downloaded this app called the Forest app the and forest? it's a time, yeah, it's a time management app. Okay. It, it, um, it's kind of like the Pomodoro effect, I don't know, or technique. You yeah. study for 25 minutes and then you get a five minute break and then you start that again. Right. And so for this app, you plant a tree and for 25 minutes, your tree grows. And if uh -huh. you go to your phone and you like, go to Instagram or whatever, your tree dies and like, that's just no fun. <laughs> so it's, um, I know yeah. it's right here. It's really cool. Um, I use this every time I study and there's my tree. I plant it. Um, and I don't use my phone for 25 minutes. I have a tree that grows and it becomes it into a forest. Um, so I definitely do that when I block off time to study because yeah. I can only study for five hours a day and my brain just kind of like dies on me. So Every hour counts for me, and I have to use that when I study because I just have to stay on track or else I just no, do true. other things. Yeah. We're all very guilty of being easily distracted. Mm -hmm. um, how do you deal with uh, fatigue when you're trying to study? Um, so I kind of figure out when's the best time for me to study. I, I like waking up early to study, but sometimes that just doesn't happen. I have to study into the to like the evening. I never pass 1030. Um, I have to get my sleep. Um, but when I'm tired, I actually don't drink coffee because coffee makes my stomach turn. But I love matcha. It's like another source of caffeine for me. I usually drink something like that. 
Um, but if I'm really tired, I honestly just take a five minute nap. I wake up kind of refreshed. It's like a power nap and I just get back into it. Well, I know some people are great nappers and others are, are terrible. I think I'm <laughs> the equivalent of napping. If I take a nap, I'm done for. So, yeah. Um, well, I, we are wrapping up on the hour and I want to give you, well, first and foremost, I want to take some time, um, well, take an opportunity to thank you for joining us on this series and sharing your words of wisdom. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity to, uh, Jasmine as well, share anything about uh, Jasmine KPA that you want to right now. Say it one more time so everybody understands where they can go for more information, contact you and follow you. Yeah, so it's uh, my website is www.jasminek-pa.com. I'm very active on my social media, which is Instagram. That's like my main platform. Um, and if you ever have questions, you can always DM me. You can always email me. Uh, but first, check the blog, check the website, because I have a ton of information on there. Um, and yeah, just I have a lot of things come in, good content. Um, I'm always here for advice so you can always message me um uh, but yeah everything's going to be up on the website so if you ever Love need any questions answered so and just so everyone's clear jasmine j-a-z-m-i-n-e yes jasmine k uh so it's not with an s um mm -hmm. so jasmine kwong first year pa student you're, you're kicking butt congrats on sticking through the challenging times and getting to where you are it's a difficult journey uh, we wish you the best of luck. And everyone who came and listened today, thank you for joining us. I know you're from all over the world at different points in your journey. You can do it. Stay strong. Uh, join us again for another webinar soon. And also as a special gift, um, because Jasmine joined us today, everyone who wants to check out Picmonic and join, uh, you can use the code Jasmine30, J-A-Z-M-I-N-E, 30, or a 30% off discount to any Picmonic subscription for the next 48 hours. So you have less than two days to get in and get your discount. Jasmine, you got to show us the cute pup. Now, now okay. I, I know. He's like, he's like playing around with his little <laughs> toy ball. There That's he is. Carter. Oh, Carter. Carter. Love him. <laughs> he's like, I'm shy. I don't want to be like, like, Joe, mama. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Taking time again. Everyone, thank you for joining. We are signing off here and hope to see you all again soon. Have a good night. Thank Bye. Thank you so much. Bye.